Good afternoon, listeners. Welcome to the Omcast, the show where we get real, authentic, and weird. Oh, we're gonna get weird today. Yes, today is today's special guest is the one and only Marguerite Martin. I'm so excited because I've been wanting her on the show since I conceived the idea to do this. So thank you for being here today. Thank Marguerite. you for having me. I feel very honored. I yes. kind of I'm kind of wondering what we're gonna talk no, about. No, I'm honored as well. So <laughs> if you guys don't know who Marguerite is, she used to be in real estate and I just when I think of her, she is just such a strong feminine power like she just is a woman that really stands in who she is and I, I just honor you so much because you do so much internal work external work and just like always constantly trying to level up in everything that you do like from picking up violin and guitar lessons while yeah, just doing everything and I think that's really admirable Thank you. Thank yeah you. and last year we we got together and shot the meet the neighbors project which is a little online mini series for Windermere professional partners and we actually won a freaking award because we're just that freaking awesome and we just make a really great team and I just wanted to have you on here to share about your story and what it takes to be this is not politically correct but a bad bitch no. teach us how to be a bad bitch I please have, I have bad bitchy moments <laughs> like but but savagery. overall, in the whole <laughs> spectrum of everything, I think uh, you do a pretty damn good job. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, and I just I respect you so much for just not being shy of being you and not holding back f to please other people. You know, you just like are such a unique personality, and I just love that you just own it. Thank you, Kate. I, yeah, I really do. I it's hope. Very interesting to see myself through your eyes. <laughs> I know. That's how I. That's how every time I think of you, that's just all I think about. I'm like, oh, Marguerite is just so cool. I wish more people can just be their true, authentic self and then work towards that at least. Mm -hmm. You know. So I, I really, I really like to know like where like the development, personal development journey started for you. Like when when you're like, I want to make myself better. <laughs> <laughs> Is that too broad? Is that No, it's not broad at all. I mean, the truth is like it's not it's not very sexy. Like, you know, like most people I think that have like started a a path, a spiritual path mm -hmm. or a, a path of inner work, it's rooted in pain. It's true. We don't change because like we're like, you know, it would be really great discomfort. <laughs> discomfort and pain. Exactly. Like, you know, we don't we don't we don't say like I just I just I'm great, but I want to make myself even better. Very few people. And yeah. Until I the inspired think. moment, right? I'm gonna move this mic. Just make sure yeah. That's good. Make sure your hair is not on end. The last one got like hair so messed flip. up. Okay, hair cool. Flip. Yes. But I think that's the thing. Is like people, people, we change because we're in pain. Yep. And um, or moving towards love, right? Is it? Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, 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 it's not that we don't have any emotion apart from pain, but I think that for me, I, maybe uh, there are other people that are more enlightened than I am, but for me, like it's been rooted in discomfort mm -hmm. and. I maybe maybe I get uncomfortable a little faster than other folks. I, I'm not. I'm a restless person. Mm -hmm. You know, one of one of the things that I have to work on is like being okay, <laughs> and just not working on every single thing. Like sitting with things being imperfect. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm committed to facing reality, and that has taken me to some pretty weird places. <laughs> I it's been taking to some pretty nice level places. I feel oh, like. Thank you. Yeah, like the moment that she has like an inspiration to do something, she'll like. She's like, I'm gonna move to Portland. I'm gonna pack all my things and my cat, and I'm gonna move to a completely new place where I don't know anybody. Yeah. And I'm gonna start over. And I think like it just takes a lot of courage to do that. Thank you. And just like not be so like stopped by fear or like what could ha what could happen. You know, just like getting lost in in the mind. I feel like you just take that fucking action. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. So like, what, where was what was like the, the like was there a moment where you like I'm gonna do something. Yeah, I mean, I've I've been working, you know, self-employed as a real estate agent since I was 25 years old, um, and over the last couple of years, like you know, like I've I've achieved some success that I didn't expect. Mm -hmm. You know, like things have gone very well for me, and not just with real estate transactions, but also like I've been having the opportunity to work with you. We have clients like working in video work and 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 doing things at a level that I, I didn't quite ever expect, and mm -hmm. like having. You know, I think I thought, you know, I, I didn't grow up with a ton of money. Um, and I, I think I thought that if I just made enough money, like everything would just fall into place. Do you think That's that? what a lot of people think. I feel like a cliche even saying this. But, <laughs> um, I also think there's nothing more irritating when you can't figure out how you're going to pay your freaking rent for someone to say, you know, it's really not about the money. 
<laughs> because you guess it is. You know, like um, it is about the money, and money makes everything easier. And, mm -hmm. and and one of the things that makes easier is for you to see that um, professional success and having things um, is not where it's at. And that was a very distressing discovery for me. Mm -hmm. Like because you're like I have all the external things, but why am I still feeling? The things didn't fall into place. Yep. The things I really wanted. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't even really articulate what exactly did I think was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, unfortunately, I have a really terrible habit of when things, you know, when I hit that kind of disappointment, that's what my therapist says. She's like, you don't like being disappointed. Mm -hmm. I really turned on myself. You know, I did, you know, I read, probably read too much Camus. You know, I really started thinking about meaninglessness, mm -hmm. you know. Margaret goes really deep. Go, go like into like aliens and just <laughs> any, any sci-fi science, like just melded I mean, melded the with dark part, times like... were not about sci-fi, but also <laughs> I'm always interested in sci-fi. Yes. Like, but I, I think, you know, I went through a really dark place. So you say like, oh, you're just so cool. You like packed up and moved. It's like, you know, there was a process that took place before that of like really confronting like, was my life working for me? Was this thing that I'd built that I thought was going to give me everything, if it wasn't working for me, then what, what was it that I was supposed to do next? Mm -hmm. And after I kind of came out of that dark space, like, I just continued on. And a, a girlfriend of mine, I was on vacation, and she said, you know, you've always lived in the same state. You know, and I'm like, well, yeah, my, my business is sort is of here. geographically rooted. Mm -hmm. And she was like, is it? I mean, most people live somewhere else at least once in their life. You're 39. Like, get out of here. Go somewhere. Can you guys believe Mark Reed's 39? For the viewers that are watching the YouTube channel, in my head, I'm like, oh, yeah, every time I talk to her, I was like, yeah, we're the same age. She's 30 years old. I mean, I haven't had any babies, though. I've been gentle with myself. I get, like, nine hours of sleep a night. And she works out and just, like, eats healthy, and she's vegetarian, and she's kind of going on. But, yeah, I think, like, she challenged me, and I, my response to her was that I'd ne I didn't feel called anywhere you know we just okay. finished the meet, meet the neighbors shoot mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know we've done this really cool thing I felt like everything's fine but it's just like I don't know what's next mm -hmm. and I don't feel like I need to move to New York or I don't know I thought like maybe some sun mm -hmm. I was like I can't live in Arizona I can't live in a red state like that's never gonna happen um, but <laughs> I realized like I love Tacoma like I love it here mm -hmm. but I just needed a little break mm -hmm. and I was like well what's exactly like Tacoma but bigger and that to me that was Portland so you yeah. just picked up and did it. Yeah, I was gone in six weeks. Drove down, found so, an apartment, signed a lease. Where does like the the quick action taking like where does that come from? Frankly, I think that's an obsessive, addictive personality. Like mm -hmm. that's a manifestation of that. Like mm -hmm. I might not make the right decision, but I make it very quickly. Yeah, it's like idea, implement. Yeah. Whether it's like rationalized or not, it's like you just fucking go for it. I, I, I do I do kind of think that part of that is fear. Mm. Because it's this idea that fear of missing, yeah, missing the opportunity, missing mm. the moment. Um, like, like if I don't do it now, maybe I'll make up an excuse not to do it later. Mm. It, professionally, I think it's like if I don't do this now, somebody's going to do it first. Yes, that'll make me mad. That's the competitive side, <laughs> very competitive. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think with this, I was just motivated, um, and I had no idea what was going to happen, and that was weirdly not scary. I was just so thirsty for novelty. That's so cool. And also a non anonymity. Mm -hmm. You know, like I was just ready to like walk down the street and not know anybody for a while. Margaret's pretty famous here in uh, what, Tacoma. Like Tacoma, I think special, it's a special thing. Yeah. So you're <laughs> over it though. No, I love. It. I'm, I'm. You know, we're back in Tacoma right now doing yes. a project. Yeah. And I love it. Like I went out to dinner last night and like saw one of my favorite bartenders, mm -hmm. and she was like, "Oh, you know, it's so funny. I was in Portland the other weekend, and I walked by a restaurant, and I saw you sitting at the bar eating dinner." <laughs> The world just gets smaller. And it gets smaller, smaller, and smaller and smaller. But also, like, it's nice. Sometimes it's nice to be known, and it's a place where you can be known. Mm -hmm. But I need a break from, you know, I I don't even, you know, you were saying like, oh, you're self aware, you know, you're like, I don't know who I am right now. She does silent retreats. Like, come on, you're like definitely walking the path. I'm I'm trying. I mean, I'm not like, doing no ten day vipassana, but I've done some four day insights. On the list, we're gonna do it together. And we're gonna <laughs> vlog. Gonna we're gonna we're gonna vlog in silence. It's gonna be great. Vlog in silence. We'll make some great but positive content. Is that even it. allowed? No, it's not. No. We can if you serve as a volunteer, you can. Oh, interesting. Yeah, but still, even then, it's pretty like try to be quiet for yeah. everyone. It's really nice. I, I've I've worked out a system now of coverage for my business where when I go on these retreats, I actually leave all the tech behind. I have a flip phone now. Mm. And so I actually, on the last one, I made the drive to the retreat center with only the flip phone. And Margaret's so popular, she has a phone nanny <laughs> and a separate phone that, like, 
her bat phone that she calls it. And the flip phone is actually a third phone. I left the bat phone at home as well. <laughs> I didn't even know this. I didn't know this. Yeah, so. But you got your, like everything's so organized and you just have your life like really set up so you can just really do what you want to do. Well, and that's out of necessity, right? So what happens yes. if any self-employed person is watching who's been working for any amount of time, and you know this too, that availability. If you're at a 10-day Vipassana retreat, even with the very best of intention, and you have your phone with you, and you get pinged on something important, it's very hard not to respond to it. Yep. You know, if you can be, you're a person that wants to help people, I'm a person that wants to help people, it feels selfish, I know there's a pain point here, I want yep. to respond. Yep. The most important thing we can do is delegate, like give it to somebody else who can take care of that situation so that we can focus on taking care of ourselves. It took me a really long time to get to that point. Mm -hmm. So these systems that are in place, again, born out of pain, ah, born out so of so many European vacations. Mm -hmm. And I kept going to Europe because I knew none of my clients would wake up till three o'clock. <laughs> you know, I could get- <laughs> Give you some space. Yeah, I could get a whole day almost in oh. where it would be okay if I didn't look at the phone. Mm -hmm. And that first time that I went four or five days with no phone, like, I'd forgotten. Life changing. I'd forgotten what it was like to be a person. Yeah. And now I look forward to it. I'm excited. People are like, why would you want to go like days without your phone and just sit on a cushion and not talk to anybody? And I'm like, that's what have you ask me. Yeah. I was like, have you ever spent like as a woman, I'll tell you like four days of not having to make eye contact or apologize for myself. Yep. Like women, I don't know if everyone knows, like we apologize for just like being in the room, like bumping in, like opening the door first. Like the first day, you know, the teacher gets up and leaves first. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's the same for the Vipassana, but at the place oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, there's all these people. We're all, we all look like perfect little Buddhas sitting on this cushion. So you have no idea what anybody's personality is because we're all, we all just look like enlightened and it's amazing. You judge everyone. You, judging yeah, everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's judging me. It's That's, fine. Yes, yes, exactly. Teacher's up there and like they'd let you know the like little rules and like the teacher's going to leave first. It was the very first day we're in silence. I'm like, I'm in silence. Look at me in silence, sitting in silence. And then like at the end of it, I really had to pee. And so they, they like, you know, they're like, they're like the end of the mm -hmm, session. Mm -hmm. And the teachers get up and I like ran out the door to oh. pee. And I didn't even think about it until I was walking back. And I was like, oh shit. Like, they must all think. I must think, I, like she must think she's so great. Leaving before the teachers, <laughs> right? Like my That's head, your own, yeah. My head just started going and like that first realization that like, I can't apologize for this. Cause I feel like if this was a normal retreat, when we got to lunch, I'd have been like, oh my God, you guys, did you see me leave mm -hmm. before the teacher? That was a total accident. I just really had to pee and now I'm get up before the teachers grow the rest of the retreat, <laughs> right? And I realized like, I don't need to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Nobody else is thinking about this. Yep. How many times throughout our lives are we just narrating out of like fear? Yes. I and... was just gonna say, yeah, yeah. it's like, like everyone is so worried about worrying about themselves and worrying about yeah. what other people think. Yeah, it's like everyone's worried about themselves. Yeah, it's so crazy. I want to talk a touch on that because like you're saying, like you, women like don't need to apologize. Margaret is very strong in her feminine power, and she was actually telling me today that <laughs> women's clothing they don't have pockets in them. Because of oppression. <laughs> and then I was like, what the fuck? Hold on one second. You she's can like, Google she's it, like, Gabe. I, I, I'm going to tonight. But she was saying that like women's clothing, like they, they don't, they have like pocket lines, but not the actual pockets because they, they think that women don't need the utility to carry things because they're not as important. I'm like, whoa, I have never even considered that thought in my life. And yeah, and, like, and then there's now, other women that are agreeing with her. They're like, oh yeah, that's why we have to carry a purse. That's why I have to cut these. I'm like, what? Sorry. Well, and, and that's the whole thing. And like now, you know, it's so exciting. We're in like the most exciting time ever. Yeah. Like yeah. people can just start companies now and people do. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, I make this cool dress with pockets. I'm going to make a cool dress with pockets. Yep. It's going to be a feminist dress with pockets. <laughs> and like, you know, it's so funny. Like there's jokes about it. There's memes about it of women saying like, oh, I love your dress. It has pockets. And then everybody's like high-fiving. It's a huge thing. I had somebody uh, in my Facebook feed recently was talking about how she had an infant boy and how easy all of his pants have pockets how easy it was to find pants with pockets for her son that didn't know what a pocket was. And she couldn't find pants with pockets for her grown ass self. That's so interesting. That's something that I've never even like taken a look at before. Well, and I mean- I there's so many other things. There's so many things. I mean, when that, like, trying to imagine what it's like for another person, like being an American, trying to imagine what it's like to be from any other country, tr you know, being a white woman, trying to imagine what it's like to be a man, to be a black man, mm -hmm. to be a man of color. Like, mm -hmm. I can't imagine it. And so that means that when I'm hearing someone else's experiences, um, 
even when they sound really weird or different than my own, I have to accept that like I don't know what it's like to be gay mm -hmm. and move through the world. Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine. You can't? No. Really? No. Oh. I mean, first of all, you have a lot of flexibility and freedom that I envy. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like you do too. Oh yeah, it's different though. Mm. It's different. You know, yeah. I've traveled extensively. I've traveled mm -hmm. the world sort of, but you know, I mostly go to European speaking countries where I speak the language. Mm. I've been. I've never been to Asia. Do you want to come? I mean, I kind of do, but also like I'm nervous. Like I've never, I've never been in an environment where people could tell I'm not from there just by looking at me. Oh, because you're like because your color and yeah. how you look. I can pass oh, as an English person. I can pass yeah, as a yeah, French yeah. person, as That's an Italian interesting. person. Yeah. So it, it's. That'd be good to get you out of. I'm intimidated. Your mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Then you should step towards that, right? Absolutely. And I'm also yeah. like, I'm very smug and proud of the fact that I've learned a few Romance languages, mm -hmm. right? So like, if yeah, Marie, I, she can rap in French. Italian. 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 So cool. So <laughs> my, cool. My French is abysmal, but I can communicate, <laughs> right? So like the idea that if I'm a little bit lost, I can ask for directions. Yeah. If I go to Thailand and I get a little bit lost. you are be like, uh, SIM card. Yeah, I don't know what to do. I won't know what to do. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what? People have been traveling You're the world. You're not going to die. No. I mean, probably, hopefully not. But if I do, we get that to the journey as well. I don't know. <laughs> but that's where my head goes. It's like it's a much bolder step, it I is. think, to, to, to go to countries where you know, people are really different than you. And mm -hmm. I, I haven't I haven't truthfully done that. Are you do you want to? I do. Oh, I good. do. Okay, okay. It's on the list. I'm gonna end up on a cruise or something. Here. Don't go on a cruise. <laughs> Don't go on a cruise. My mom would and her, her husband would definitely recommend a cruise. But I'm like <laughs> okay. oh, I bet there's nice ones out there. Have you done one before? My uncle has been a cruise travel agent for thirty years and he's been trying to get me to go on a cruise. And I haven't done it yet, but I will definitely do it because it's, it's quite the experience. It's a family business sort of. Yeah. But, yeah. but there's just so much glutton and like you're like trapped on a boat with everyone and I think all there's... you can eat, everything, just like indulgence. It's true. A, it's a human farm on a boat. There's <laughs> also little ones though, like they have the little river cruise ones in Europe now. They got the oh, big, okay. big, big sailboats. I thought you were talking like Royal Caribbean or I something. I mean, maybe that's where I should begin. Yeah. Maybe if, that, if anyone has any suggestions, yeah. I'm here for it. <laughs> Comment. <laughs> Comment below. Oh, that's so good. So like, I guess when, so in the past it was all pain body stuff and then like, Missing fear, of missing out. Like, what is the motivating factor for you now? Like in the choices that you make. I think staying alive. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I'm telling you, like I've never been <laughs> so much mind. Sorry. Like, what's what's like the hard motivation <laughs> of what you're doing? Like, I'm telling you, you really go for it. I I'm really... telling you, it was a stark, terrifying thing mm -hmm. to think that I didn't want to be around anymore. But like, how do you show up so bright? You know, you're like avoiding like pain all your life, or just moving. Yeah, just like avoiding pain. So how are you so? I think your your disposition is so positive. Where does that come from? If you came from so much pain, I don't. It's not that I came from so much pain. You know, like this is a recent experience. <laughs> oh, I need you know, some death metal. <laughs> I've had like you know, and I think when I think about painful experiences in my life, if mm. I'm really honest. You know, I've never been depressed for five years, right? Mm -hmm. I've never had that kind of like clinical brain mm -hmm. chemistry, depression, you know. But with your situation, you could have been. Yeah, I think my Certainly. thinking, you know, I've followed my thinking along a certain path and gotten to a certain place that for me felt very authentic. Mm -hmm. And this is the whole thing is like people will be like, oh, cheer up, you're such a positive person. Why are you being so negative? I hate and that. It, it was the worst. And <laughs> it's like, well, for me, this is the truth right now. I'm like mm -hmm. trying to face some dark stuff in myself. And in and I'm sorry, I am not the first. My friend told me this when I was in my dark place. She was like, you're not the first human being to look at the world and say, this is this is madness. Like, this is pure pain. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not the first one. So stay there as long as you want. And having that permission. <sighs> Got me through it so much more quickly. So now you mm -hmm. say, like, what, what drives you now? I am... You know, like, I feel like for the first time in my life, I'm making a decision to be here. I didn't consent to be conceived. I didn't consent to be born. Maybe you did, though. on a spiritual <laughs> level, yeah, maybe on a spiritual levy, level, like there was a soul action, but yeah. I'm not conscious of that. Yes. I don't have a memory yeah, yeah, yeah. of that. So, you know, like I decided to stay. I decided to be here and engage in the next, you know, 30, 40 years of my life, mm -hmm. hopefully, barring any like uh, accident or something, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So like... I don't know what I'm here to do. I've never had a situation like I'm in right now, you know, where I'm, I'm on sabbatical, I'm taking a break from my previously scheduled life, <laughs> and, you know, I'm thinking about the future, and I'm trying not to make a plan. I've never done it. Does it feel good? It feels weird. Yeah, it feels good. I'm like six months in, and I'm just now starting to get to the point where I can kind of be present. You know, like something I've read about for years, something we've talked about for years, I've meditated, I've, you know, done different things. 
but like there's not so much chaos in my life that it, every minute is taking me out of this moment. Mm -hmm. So that took a while. And I think, you know, someone tried to warn me. I was interviewing on uh, my po podcast a woman who had sold a really huge business and to, to go deep into her own work, mm -hmm. you know, she mm -hmm. was, she, she's like a guru now. <laughs> like she was, she was a success at taking a break. Mm -hmm. um, she never did corporate life ever again. And I was like, wow, that must have been amazing. Like, and now I'm like, oh my God. Does it inspire you to do that too? No, but you know what she said to me? Mm. She was like, it was terrible. What? She's like, it was like jumping off a bullet train. <laughs> you cannot go. And this is what I've started trying to tell people who are like, they idealize the break. You know, they idealize the sabbatical. Oh, yes. And like the, this idea that like, oh, wow, I bet you just like do yoga and meditate and read. Oh, you must like, you must just sit with your cat and like contemplate life. And it's like, oh. I, there's a lot of like all of a sudden when you stop if you've been working traveling socializing nonstop if you pause every feeling and like buried memory percolates to the surface yeah and you yep. know what that's also kind of the point so then yes. I started the first thing that happens is like I start feeling all this pain and I'm like oh fuck you're gonna ruin your sabbatical <laughs> you're gonna ruin your sabbatical with this inner drama and then I was like well wait Let's allow the inner drama. Like, what yes. is what is this about? Like, let's yep. sit with it yep. in the moment. Yep. Like, As something that, I mean, I hear you're supposed to do, but have mm -hmm. never developed a capability. So, mm -hmm. like, learning to just, like, be with emotion, I think, is probably the work of this year. Because mm -hmm. I have, a, like I said, I have an addictive personality. I've managed to avoid, you know, becoming an alcoholic or, you know, becoming a drug addict. Thank which God. It's hard You'd to do. You'd be so different if you were a drug addict. Well, I was certainly a workaholic for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I certainly have other compulsive tendencies. Morgan and I are very extreme. I feel like that's why we yeah. get along so well. We're always hanging out at zero or a hundred. It's yeah. either nothing at all or everything. So I guess what I'm confessing to you right now, Gabe, mm. is I'm trying to dabble in the balance. I mean, I hate that word. Me I'm too. not even. I don't even want to hang out with people who use that word. It's, but it's, it's a common meeting statement, I don't right? Believe in it's balance. all about the balance, and everyone's like, "Yeah." I don't believe in balance. I don't think it's real. I think you need a balanced mind. Yes. You know, and but your life is never going to be the perfect amount of family, the perfect amount of friends, the perfect amount of love, the perfect amount of work. As long as mind is in it, right? I mean, it, if your mind is balanced, you can prioritize one thing over another, and mm -hmm. you know, like that's the thing. And, and I think we're killing ourselves trying to create something that is just really not possible and really mm -hmm. not necessary. Yep. Like it's okay to have some intensity, but not to bring the beating beating ourselves up and mm -hmm. beating other people up when they're yeah. not on our level. Mm -hmm. Not that we do that. <laughs> not as much. No, it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're getting raw here. We can share. <laughs> That's so cool, Marguerite. Yeah, so, hmm. I just want to figure out, like, what just propel, like, what wakes you up in the morning? Like, what do you want to do? Like, what's, okay, now that My you're iPhone. <laughs> Even though I'm on sabbatical, I don't like to sleep past 7.30. <laughs> You're so good about your sleep schedule. <laughs> I like my full nine hours. <laughs> so cute. Um, yeah, well, so what, what, do you wanna, what do you wanna do next? I guess like what, what makes your, what do you feel like would make your heart sing? You've done so many things. She used to be in skydiving. You to a skydiver. She's done it all. Oh, I wasn't that good of so a skydiver. You weren't, oh, how do you be good at skydiving? You know, it's actually a very technical sport. Like flips? Oh, there's flips. There's like, I had a really, like, I drove like the Ford F-150 of parachutes. There's like Ferrari parachutes. Oh, so you go way faster. I'm way too uncoordinated for that sort of thing. I can just like fall out the door a few hundred times. Yeah. <laughs> she even, she was so into it that she made it into her brand. She was the skydiving agent. Mm-hmm. That still still lingers on the internet. It does it? linger on the internet. There's some pictures. So like, if you were to like create like a new like a skydiving agent, what would, what would how would you describe yourself now? You know, like, what, would, hey, what this, would that? This is the work. Is it's like unbecoming. Yeah, and discovering like uncovering like the actual right. Right, and and also like um, yeah, like not feeling the need to package myself for other people in okay. a palatable way. You know, mm -hmm. that was a marketing move that was about personal marketing was about saying, what are the attributes about me that I can turn into like something that people I want to really want to want to work with will resonate with and then they'll call me. And this is something that, you know, we do through our work to help clients. Like how do we package a client to sell to their ideal client, yes. right? You know, so that the ideal client is drawn and can connect with the person that they will work best mm -hmm. with. You know, that mm -hmm. was an early version of that for me. And I think now it's, it's very hard to deprogram, you know, packaging myself. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it anymore. 
So you don't want to like confine into, or just like narrow down your specialty? Not area? even to myself. Mm, okay. This is, and this has been very hard. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like for you? It looks like telling myself the truth. Even when I can't Which tell. Which you do already. I mean, you make a lot of rosy assumptions. I well, think I guess just from the surface, I'm like, yeah. Margaret's got her shit together. Well, she's but like I intense, think, but she's got it together. But that's the thing about the world. Right? You don't have it together? I think some days I do. And you take six weeks, wait, six <laughs> months sabbatical. 12 months. 12 months sabbatical, <laughs> hang out with her cute little cat, like things. And she drives a Beamer. Like, she just drives, 20 year old Beamer. And someone died in. <laughs> Okay, okay, never mind. It's but I, I think what I'm trying to say is I think we all do this. You know, we look to other people. I think a lot of people look to you, right? Mm -hmm. And they think like, oh my God, I just want his life. He's got it all figured out. And the truth is you have a lot of things figured out. And you have an incredible life and an amazing you. life. You're, you, Thanks, you are on a, a, an unusual path, Thank right? You. And your inner life is not perfect. It's definitely so, not. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, I try to share as much as I can. There's people watching that have no idea, right? Yeah. And that's that's what I'm trying to say is that like you're a human. Yeah, and I mean I'm pretty sure people who don't know me very well can already tell that I'm human. But mm -hmm. like I think that that's the thing is like stop feeling like we need to you know package package who we are for other people to consume. And I think like even everything gets co-opted so quickly. It's part of like being in capitalism, especially for those of us who work in marketing, mm -hmm. who have minds that that kind of work this way. Mm -hmm. And and I think like. You know, every aspect of our lives is immediate. Any any kind of spiritual insight, any kind of profound experience is immediately packaged and sold. You know, so now instead of like the really powerful experiences that people were having with mushrooms and sacred conditions, like now we're supposed to microdose to improve our creativity, mm -hmm. right? It's like all about function and productivity. Um, you know, people talk about vulnerability. Brene Brown did all this amazing work, you know, starting, you know, 10 years ago, I think is when she like really kind of exploded, talking about, you know, through like overcoming shame and like allowing ourselves to be fully seen, you know, that is how we become authentic. Mm -hmm. You know, that is how we connect mm -hmm. with other people and have mm -hmm. fulfilling lives. Well, now that's like a freaking corporate buzzword, right? You say vulnerability, like everybody's like, well, I mean, like, People are fake vulnerable. Like there's strategic vulnerability. Brands are saying, how can we as a brand be more vulnerable? Yeah. And it's like, fuck off. Yeah. Like that's the capitalism. The intention is so impure. It's yeah, and, and you know, it's understandable because we're all trying to survive. The truth is if I can't figure out a way to package and sell myself to some degree, mm -hmm. this country doesn't care about me unless I produce something. Mm -hmm. I will fall through the net and I will die in the streets. And that's what we allow to happen. And I think we all need to be asking ourselves, like, how do we feel? You know, like, it's pretty fucked. yeah, I mean, how do we feel about like spiritual work being put on mugs and sold? Like, you know, so like, you know, I mean, for those people who are churched, right? Like people who are saved Christians, right? Like there's a whole, I mean, like it's all about expanding and growing these massive churches. Mega churches, yeah. Yeah, you're, you don't have rich white people in the suburbs opening churches in the city and going to church with homeless people or people that don't look like them. It doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. That would be Christianity to me. Yes, it's true. Yeah. true. yeah, truly walking like, yes. But I walk into yeah. yoga studios and I see like a bunch of white ladies stretching for the most part, mm -hmm. right? I don't, I think like true, sincere, you know, work, the work that we're supposed to be learning from these traditions, like we don't seem to be implementing very mm -hmm. well. And it's because mm -hmm. I think our true religion is money and stuff. Currently, right? Yeah. And or the people that are in control have like yeah, a tight grip. Yeah, but I know I, I want to blame the man, but I feel like I participate. And, and mm -hmm. I'm trying to be more mindful of it, mm -hmm. but I'm mm -hmm. still in it. And, mm -hmm. and I think we're all in it. None Definitely. of us are too good for it. So like, how do you start to slowly like... Unplug. Unplug, disrupt, yep. make people uncomfortable, mm -hmm. like bring other voices into the room mm -hmm. that maybe don't have the same access we do. Mm -hmm. Like, how do we start doing that? That's that to me. That's the work. When I think about the future, it's like, how do I take what I got through? No real, I mean, I've inherited. I've been very lucky too. Like, just be, by virtue of being a white lady in the United States of America, mm -hmm. like I've accomplished. I, I'm like playing life on the easy setting, mm -hmm. right? Like a lot of what I've got. Because you're white. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. And so, how do I give up some of that power? How do I give up some of that privilege? Some of it can't be given up. So mm -hmm. how do I start like? 
it, it's, moving it somewhere else. Yeah, it's my. It's not even like, oh, I'm such a good white lady. I just want to give them my power. Like, no. Like, this is our obligation. Like, yes. and it, it, as privileged people, as white people, as people in the United States, when you know the poverty throughout the world is so great. Like, how do we start to figure out? And I don't have any answers. I'm like, again, the comments. I'm very interested in what people are doing, but like. It's, we don't just get to arrive anymore. Mm -hmm. Like if we want to, if, if we're doing the work, how are you fucking it up? Like how are you uh -huh. putting a stick in the wheel yep. of this system that is killing people? Yep. Yep. Like I don't know, but and I think that's, that's the work. That's that is very work. spiritual work. Yes. That is the most spiritual work we can do. Yep. Like the truest act of service is like. And that's the most authentic thing everyone. too. Everyone. Yes. To say, yeah, I'm not a good person. Sometimes I say really racist shit. Yeah, I'm not a good person. Like, sometimes I'm very fatphobic. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I'm trying to, like, be a better person. Mm -hmm. And, like, when I discover something about myself that's ugly, usually I deny it first, and then I acknowledge it, and then I start working on it. And that, that happens within, like, a 0.5-second <laughs> interval period. It's like, realize? Oh, it's going to do this? Okay, and then implement it. I mean, that's how I see it from the outside. I, I'm like, okay, she knows how to solve, like, she's got a problem, she's going to fucking fix it. Well, and that's the thing. Like, I don't, I don't want to look at myself as like a constant, unending construction site. But I think that's the work is to you just. We are masterpieces. Like, like slowly, yeah, slowly like becoming, revealing, yep. discovering. Yeah. yeah. And so, what's the, what's the fuel for that? Like, how do we take mm -hmm. care of ourselves in the midst of like trying to be more fully who we are and and to help other people do that as well? To be present and enjoy the enjoy the ride, right? Yeah. Enjoy the pro like trust and enjoy the process. Very tricky for me. Yeah. Like, especially now, I think we were talking about this a couple days ago. You know, we're, we're in this place now where, like, I'm taking a break and everybody's asking me, what are you doing next? Mm -hmm. And I'm asking myself, what am I doing next? Are you trying to package, package something, something to, to tell them? them? Package something to tell them. And then also, like, my, my friend was, is, is, is also in a similar situation and I was like, what's your plan? Mm -hmm. And she was like, I'm just waiting for things to emerge. I was like, what? That's a new perspective. I was like, how do you know it's going to happen? Because for me, it's going to emerge if I micromanage, you know. And make it happen. Absolutely. Right? I mean, yeah. Gabe has to hear my dating stories. That's like, so great. It, I mean, like, how do I just trust that this relationship is going to unfold mm -hmm. the way it's supposed to unfold? Because mm -hmm. to my mind, if I'm not telling it what to do. Then it won't. It won't. Mm -hmm. And that's been a real lesson is like when it comes to my career, when it comes to my personal life, when it comes to my friendships, patience, like allowing things to come mm -hmm. forth. Like, it doesn't feel like it's going to happen without me forcing it. But that trust is, like, where, right. like, that's where that comes into play, that unwavering trust underneath all of it. Yeah, I'm not there. I want to get there. I think it's also a byproduct of an addictive personality. Mm -hmm. I think we tend to think, like, we're we that in control. Yes, of everything. Yeah. everything. And we're, we're not... so out of control. The more that you can just let go, it, like, just, then it happens and falls into place. Like, we can, like, truly not have any grasp on it at all. Yeah, and I mean, we've we've been working on projects before. Oh, yeah, like, when you're here, I mean, like, the Meet the Neighbors. Right, like, we had a couple shoots where, like, everything was going wrong, and we were like, okay, we just need to, like, we just need to allow Let go. It. It's yeah, yeah. But also, we have to get the client what they want, so, like, what do we do? Like, that's where the rubber meets the road. It's a very easy thing to tell somebody, just, like, accept it, and, like, allow, and, like, philosophically, mm -hmm. I can understand that, yes, release your grip, and, like, things will fall into place. Mm -hmm. But in practice, when there's a deadline, when there's money involved, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's hard. When it feels like the whole world will end if I don't make this person happy, mm -hmm. it's very hard to let go. Yeah, I see that perspective. However, however, the with the Meet the Neighbors thing, with a production that big, yeah. we, we really trusted. Yeah. We didn't make an outline. There was no storyboard. There was no plan. There was maybe a couple conversations before yeah. leading up to the shoot. But we really just showed up and just let it, we really just let everything happen, right? Well, and you know, it's really like funny you said, because that's exactly what happened. We allowed, you know, our subjects, like the neighbors told their stories and mm -hmm. we knew, we trusted yep. that they were all interesting. Yes. Like that was actually the whole point behind the series is yep. behind every door is a story. Yes. And so we were like, we just showed up and we're like, what's your story? Yeah. And sometimes we thought we were going in for a story that was sort of like hearted and interesting. And like, you know, one of the people we were interviewing, you know, he's no longer with us. Yep. We didn't know yep. he had cancer. that that's what he was facing and he shared that with us. And, you know, that was incredible. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that, that video made a lot of people, I can see goosebumps thinking about it because there were so, there were a lot of people that were impacted by that. Mm -hmm. And we didn't even know that was not even part of the plan. We're just like, it's going to be awesome. So when it comes to making a video, I'm ready to surrender and allow. Because I know we've done it. Yes. It works. Like yes. professionally, yeah, I can see where surrender, allow, be open, especially in the creative process, mm -hmm. right? Yep. That's where everything good comes. 
I have not yet learned to apply that. Integrate into your life. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's the same. Thing. Yeah, the same like principles. Yeah, like, am I going to be okay for the next forty years if I don't plan out every like purchase mm -hmm. and acquisition? I feel like the grasshopper who's sang all summer right now. You know, <laughs> I'm just out there with my fiddle, like doing nothing, while all the ants are like working really hard. And I'm like, is it going to get to the point where the winter comes and I'm going to be like begging to be let in? <laughs> Moving into Ann Jones' basement. So, so that's like that's like you're like kind of living in the future then, right? You're yeah, that's, like I'm missing the, the moment because you're like preparing. anxiety. Yes, anxiety comes from just living in in forward time, as opposed to like bringing it back. You're like, oh, I'm here. I am okay right now, and the next moment I'll be okay if I'm okay right now. So it's just like bring it back into the moment. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that part of that is like trusting. You know, that the friendships that I have, that the world that I live in mm -hmm. is fundamentally a good place. And again, it philosophically, is. I believe that. It is. But then you catch me talking about the future and I'm like, this is when we're going to all be eating. It's yeah. from the sci-fi. Right. It's too much. I do read too much. Yeah, you get deep. <laughs> so deep. I remember like the novel you're talking about with the, we were shooting with Anne. And you're talking about like the alien sex and the human, like coming to get the human race. I'm like, Octavia Margaret, Butler. Where do you Dawn. go? Where do you go in your novels? <laughs> <laughs> I like the equal part of places. I mean, you're an explorer in the physical realm as well as the astral. Sci fi helps us imagine the future, mm -hmm. good futures and bad futures, and it like sheds light on what's happening now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like, like with the trajectory, this is how, where it's going. Yeah. Like with Black Mirror and stuff like that. Uh, we talked, oh, just maybe we just, just add this in. Just, I remember we talked about the moon landing last time. Oh, yeah. yeah a little while. Have you looked into that? I, you know, a little. Uh, yeah. I still believe in the moon landing. Really? I do. I feel like I just said I still believe in Santa Claus. <laughs> you did. Yeah. But you know, it's funny because like, this is not about the moon landing, but it's a similar type of situation. Like uh, before the 2020 midterm or the 2019, 20, what year are we? 2018 midterms. Mm -hmm. um, I have a niece who's a pretty radical activist. She's very politically involved. And I was saying like, we were talking about voting and she was a little ambivalent. And I was like, I feel like it's important for you to vote. Like, what do you, what do you think you, what do you believe about what's happening right now? And she was like, I feel like with democracy, she said, I feel like I had seeing all these adults, all these older people, like that all believe in Santa Claus still, and they're all arguing about where the presents come from. And I want to be like, there is no Santa. That's not how any of this works. And I think like she was being kind of gentle with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's a bit of a revolutionary, and I'm <laughs> such a normal nerd. But like realizing that you know the world that we assume it is is not exactly that. And oh, whether so or not it's the, the moon landing or mm -hmm. not, like to have an open mind and to also like, but I think with at the same time, like not disempower yourself with it. Because no, I think sometimes no, people are about, like, yeah. oh, you know, all these other people are in control. Yeah. What, what's, what's the, the point, point of me even living? What's, what's the point, point of doing this? Yeah. Yeah. And then there's another version of that, which is just like ignoring reality and being like, well, you know, like everything, everything is just what you decide that it is. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, you know, my neighbors are being killed by police. And, you know, there are systems that are oppressive that I'm complicit in um, that are destroying people's lives and I have a part in that. Mm -hmm. So, like, I think that there's, there's a... A balance? Uh, oh, God, I hate that word. Is that word. Ed? We're on a board. One second, one second. <laughs> can you pause this? Um, I guess we can just wrap it up now. Okay. All right, sorry about that, viewers. <laughs> Slight interruption. Are you going to cut that? No. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no, I, guess, I guess I could cut it out. We can yeah. keep it real. We'll make it, make it seamless. Where are you going to continue? Were... No, I just think like we all have an, an obligation. To, it's, is it balance? Or is it just that we're like moving through a spectrum of, be, of different degrees of being able to, to confront the truth of, yes. of, the, of life? And then the, like, like the amount that you can just be okay as it is, it's like that's the real test, right? If you can experience the spectrum and be a serene pawn within your mind. During the whole thing, right? I have definitely not got the same, like, serene pond thing that you have. Like, you are serene pond showing up as best you can at nice. all times. I don't really prioritize that. Nice. Like, what I do prioritize for myself, mm -hmm. I appreciate it in you, but I, what I prioritize for myself is telling the truth about what I see. Mm -hmm. It's a very hard thing to do. I like that's what, another thing that I really like. <laughs> Marguerite, when something is up, she'll tell you right away. Well, and I don't want to be like Donald Trump and like people be like, no, she doesn't that's look a, like it is. No, like, no, 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 no. Like, I'm going to get you a period of Donald Trump. If I'm uncomfortable or hey. if I'm seeing something that's going to be a problem down the road for us or if I'm, or if I'm detecting that someone is unhappy mm -hmm. or if I'm seeing something that seems unjust that I might be able to impact or if I've fucked up, 
if I've said something that's hurt somebody mm -hmm. and I need to go back and fix it. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't not look at that, mm -hmm. you know? That's admirable. Some people are like, I don't want to look at that. I'm going to sweep it under the rug and hope it disappears. Yeah. And it festers there for their whole life. And I it turns have... into other kinds of karma that they, you know? I don't want to say I never tried that. It did not work well for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, just like tucking it under. Let's yeah. Hope it disappears. Yeah. Have, in my I think some people tuck it under their whole life. Uh -huh. I mean, it's it's kind of popping out here and there. Those are the ones that look. Those are the ones that look the most normal and got it together. Yeah. Those are the most fucked up ones. They don't look like weirdos like us. Is no. that what you're saying? They look like perfectly like little cookie cutter. They're like those are the most fucked up. I'm not saying that it's like a bad thing. It's just like <laughs> it's like once you can take a moment and really like. Realize that you should be working on yourself because, yeah, it's I important. think trying to figure out what's really going on for myself and with other people and trying to make sure, you know, me, me and my best friend, we have been friends for 24 years, you know, and like we were having a pretty normal conversation about something last week and she had to kind of follow up with me and be like, you said something that kind of hurt my feelings. And I was like, okay. You know, like, mm -hmm. you know, what was it? And then she told me, and I was like, okay, I didn't mean it that way. And I can see it did hurt your feelings. So, like, let's talk it through. Because also I meant some of that. So, like, <laughs> you know, like, and to just have the courage. To go through that little bit of discomfort. Yeah, right? it felt like a lot of discomfort. And this but, is with someone, maybe the person in life who loves me more than anybody else, right? Who's but, known me for, for so long. You know, to, to be willing to, to, to have disagreement mm -hmm. and to risk friction to go deeper yes yep, yep. hard to do well because if you if you if you did miss it then you just what the discomfort would be so much greater than having that conversation right imagine a week long of not like talking about it right or a, and a month long yeah i was gonna say just extend it for your whole life and it's just like this little thing that you just never got to take care of and you grow further apart yep and maybe you don't even remember where the initial yeah, like, like the rupture. Rift, the tiny little rift, yeah. a little sliver that could have been resolved in the moment if you just chose to yeah, take care of it. That's well, cool. And of course we can't always, we don't always have the trust to have that conversation. Sure. But I think whenever we can like pause and say, okay, I just said something and I don't know how that hit you, but I'm feeling funny about it. How are you? That's, That's why I messaged you yesterday. Yeah, I feel like I'm arguing and I like, that with me. yeah, cause it's like, we, we, we don't, don't like hang out. I, we should hang out as friends because I think we are very similar. We have the Marco Polo. Yeah, yeah. We, we have Marco Polo. <laughs> That's her app. That's, That's the, not my the, app. the only reason I use Marco. I I'm have, obsessed with Marco Polo. She's the only person I talk to on the app. It's kind of fun. It's kind of <laughs> cool. Um, what was I going to say? Oh my God, what was I going to say? About like the rupture of like when you're friends. Oh, but yesterday when you, when you polo Yeah, me, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, like I had like, like when something comes up and I feel like the discomfort from I had to just express to you. Yeah. And I appreciate it. I was like, oh, wow. When you, when you say it like that, yeah, that might've been an issue. Maybe we should address it with that person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but also like, I didn't think anything of it until you brought it up. Yeah. So just, you know, that's where we are with it. Let's, let's check in with them. Cool. Yeah. 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 It's a, oh yeah. I was you say, checked in with me. Then I was like, let's check in with them. Mm -hmm. And like, Oh, but the reason I felt so comfortable to share that with you is because you're so open mm -hmm. with your feelings and Thank like you. whatever's going on. So it gives me permission to do the same. So uh, like, and some of the stuff I share with you, I like, I feel like I want to share with like a lot of my close friends, you know? Thank you. Yeah. So it's like you being that mirror for me to fully express myself. And that's why I like you so much. Aww. You truly just like give me the space for me to be my full self. Because you're being your full self, so thank you. Well, and like, really. I appreciate that that you experience me that way, and I, I also do every feel time. like, like we, even <laughs> in my thoughts, I'm like, oh, Marguerite is so cool. But I think like I got here, like I didn't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, like I didn't grow up having that model for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, why it's so. That's why you're so unique. There's no one else that's like, like you. Other people did that for me. Mm -hmm. You know, like other people you know, gave me the space to go a little deeper, to be a little more candid, mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm. to fuck up, frankly. Yeah. And then like allowed me to like work through it with them, mm -hmm. right? That didn't just cut me off when I was a jerk. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are so many people, especially in recent years, like a lot has happened in this country. A lot of stuff is coming up, you know, for all of us, you know, the reality is really hitting us of what we are and who we are and how we treat people. And that's an opportunity to go into like, 
you know, denial yep. land mm -hmm. as a culture mm -hmm. and as, as human beings, like living in community with each other, yep. or it's, it's an opportunity to, to like open your eyes and see how you've hurt people. Yes, I'm lot. saying you, I mean like I'm opening my eyes and seeing how I've hurt people Same. and leaning into it. And it's gosh darn, it's hard. But the, on the other side is so much like liberation. This is know? what I hear. This is what I hear and I'm like, here for it. I'm yeah. on my way. Once you clear see. all that stuff out, then you can really fully just like enjoy yourself and not have to carry any of that baggage anymore. Well, and I think it's not like, I, I think in the past I've always thought like, okay, I'm gonna read this book, I'm gonna get these skills, and then I'm gonna get there. You so know? right brain, right? Oh, so right brain. And like, you know, another, uh, a friend of mine recently, um, I was talking about like being saved by circumstance. So either mm -hmm. like, I'm gonna have this much money, and then everything's gonna work out. Or I'm gonna meet this person, and they're gonna make me feel whole in all the ways mm -hmm. I am. It's all future felt. tense. It's so always future tense. tense. And right. she said, you know, lovingly, I would suggest that like all the self personal development you've done, that you think maybe there's a, a version of yourself in the future that's gonna be better than you are now, that's mm -hmm. gonna save you from yourself. Mm -hmm. And she's like, maybe start imagining that you're already, already there, enough. already perfect. Yeah. In every moment. Yeah, and even it's even when we don't see it. So hard to do. It and is. that's. That's it. That's the work. Because if we can be this way for ourselves, we can then start to be that way for other people. Yes. Oh, Margaret. Because it's hard to, like, know. you know, it's easy to be like, wow, you know, we're all just, like, beautiful moonbeams, like, beaming through the universe with our souls alight. And then, like, somebody fucking cuts you, cuts you off in the drive through light. And you're like, <laughs> die. <laughs> I am late. Peace of mind gets how interrupted so fast. How can you remember you were a moonbeam then? You know, how can you remember you're a moonbeam when you turn on, like, freaking Fox News? How can uh -huh. you remember in that moment? Like, there are people that think so differently. Like, how can you remember people's humanity and work from that place? I'm, again, I don't have answers. But, I think like, the key is that's to, a goal. is to renounce everything and be a monk in the mountain. Well, that's not my journey, but I'm very curious. <laughs> if you make videos about it, I will so watch I, that for you. 20 years, 20 years, 20 years. <laughs> I'm going to shave my, I'm going to shave my head and I'm going to just <laughs> renounce everything. That's why you, she asked me earlier if I was ever planning on having kids while I was filming babies. I'm like, nope, that's a hard no. I think it'll be so funny. This is on YouTube. I think it's going to be so funny if in like 20 years you're like... I have children, children and I'm watching, watching the podcast. Running some company, like wearing a suit every day, like little little children running around. Suppressing all my emotions. <laughs> I mean, maybe you'll be like super woke while you do it. It's possible. But I think like, you know, you never know what's coming. I could have so never... True. Here I am, 39. I could have never imagined... At 29 that my life would look like this I definitely like when I was 19 I thought I was gonna be a flight attendant like I didn't know mm -hmm. you know and of course I thought I was gonna have kids and mm -hmm. you know I'm so grateful now like I'm like the oldest person in as far as going back as far as we can in my family tree like that has ever not had children Wow you know eight nieces and nephews I have like 67 maternal cousins I come from a family of like Damn. super Catholics that like procreation is very important and the idea that I sort of like skirted that mm -hmm. it's so exciting. that's that breaking that family karma that's like that medicine the, in the peyote circles yeah, it's like breaking those familial like cycles you know well i'm grateful that my siblings made babies because i enjoy them yes and, and they, they don't take them no take and diapers. they're all adults now like they, mm -hmm. they they teach me things yes you know children can teach us so much yeah it's true it's so cool i just i like to hang out with them once they're old enough to swear <laughs> then you can be the cool aunt. Yeah, I'm the, that's my personal brand. It is the aunt of the latest. I think Karen can stand behind that. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, so I think one thing we can end on, I guess if someone out there that's listening or watching is kind of like in a space where they're afraid to move forward or they have like pain from their past that they can't get over or they have dreams that they want to achieve, like what would you tell that person from what you've experienced? Because you've been through, I think a lot of different things have motivated you to, you know, right. be where you are today. Yeah. So someone that is going through a similar, say, say you're talking to your 19 year old self. Yeah. What would you tell her right now? Don't get married at 22. Don't, <laughs> don't marry your skydiving instructor. Maybe just chill out and wait for it. Watch life unfold a little bit. Okay, that's the, rela that's the relationship <laughs> advice. Okay, yeah, let's put that right there. Okay. Yeah, but I think, um, you know, Oprah asked that question on the Super Soul Sunday. She asked like every famous person, like what would you tell your younger self? And they all say, oh, relax. Mm. Just relax, just be in it. I would not, no, I would not be so preachy to young me. What like, would you say? I would, I would say like, I don't think I could tell her anything. 
Really? No, I'm fucking headstrong. Could anybody tell you anything? Mm. I, you know, like, if I'm talking to somebody else, what I would say is if you feel stuck, if you feel like you can't move forward, that's because who you are, who your inner self is conflicting with the idea of who you want the world to think you are. Mm. That's the rub, right? We're never stuck. We're never stuck, actually. We all, we, and we know this deep down. We always have freedom. Mm -hmm. We know we have freedom. You can, you can get up. I, I talked to a woman when I went on sabbatical. She was like, yeah, when I was 16, I walked out the door of my house. Nobody knew where I went. I didn't come back for four years. She says, I walked for days. <laughs> You can do anything. Yes. You can do anything. Facts. We know that. And we don't do it because what will people think? Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that I have to, everybody knows I'm not good at, you can't do, like we have these voices in our head and if we really think, we say everybody, but like who do we really mean? You know, we probably mean one or two people. And the truth is, is being stuck is just a matter of how do I get who I am in alignment with who I am in the world? Yeah, wow, and that's really good. It's and, and we've all been stuck and we're all gonna be stuck again. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the thing is like who I really am is not fitting with the way I'm moving through the world. And how can I how can I line that up? And it doesn't have to happen overnight even though you and I pretty much make things happen overnight. But it doesn't have to happen, it can happen incrementally mm -hmm. as long as you're moving towards like your inner truth. And I think yes. like if I can drop a couple of recommendations. Please. Martha Beck. Um, she wrote a book called Steering by Starlight, which is like the dorkiest name for a book ever, but it's like a life transforming book for me. Steering, Steering by Starlight. Yeah, okay. and it's about tuning into who you really are. Mm -hmm. And she's very funny. She reads her own audiobook if you like audiobooks. But like, you know, she's talking about all the things that we need to know, you know, the inner voice that just, you know, says nothing but crap to us. Mm -hmm. You know, like not wanting what we want. We mm -hmm. want the th we want the feeling state that we think that thing we want is going to give yes, us. Yes. You know, we if if we're stuck, yeah, it's because our essential self and our social self are not at aligned. Odds. Yeah, not, not aligned. aligned. Yeah. You're not like walking your your truth, yeah. right? Interesting. That's really good. So that's my advice uh, for 19-year-old so, Marguerite is uh, make sure like let the essential self rule the roost. Mhm. Mm and don't give a shit what other people think, right? Well, I think you're probably going to have to give a little shit. Just you know, a little. Little shits, but um not Keep, too much. Let this one be the boss, right? Yep. Let the, yep. let the be led by the heart. Yeah. That's really good. Exactly. Wow. Thanks, Marguerite. Thank you, Gabe. This is probably the longest podcast, but I feel like it felt like the shortest. If you're still there, like, hi. Yeah, you guys Thank check you. out Marguerite. I'm, I'll put her Instagram info in the, in, the, in the comments below. And check her out on Move to Tacoma. That's your podcast, right? Uh, move to Tacoma podcast and uh, yeah, move to Tacoma.com. If you want to move to Tacoma or anywhere, I'd love to find you a realtor anywhere in America. It's free. Business woman. <laughs> she's so good. I hope you guys support my sabbatical. Yeah. <laughs> she's actually, she does some really cool things and you guys will probably be really inspired if you guys follow her, to be honest. Thank you. Yeah. This is fun. Yes. I had a great time. Thank you so much for taking the time. We just got done with a full, like, 25, yeah, two day shoot. And we we're supposed to meet tomorrow to do this, but she's like, let's just do it after the shoot. I'm like, okay. She, like, puts her makeup on. I wash my face. I'm like, okay, let's go. And here we are. Spending the last moments of the work, it's not even a work day, but, yeah. you know, taking time to inspire you guys. I'm really excited to see all the episodes you have coming. This has been a really fun experiment. Mm -hmm. Me too. And I hope people really enjoy you because there are not very many personalities like you out there. Oh, just like you. Yeah. Aww. Perfect mirrors, Marguerite. Mm, look at us. <laughs> so yeah, check her out and we'll see you guys on the next episode. <laughs>